Hey guys, it's Kroom from Aileron RC, and today I will be showing you how to build the Aileron RC trainer. Um, this uh, frame back here, that's my original one, and I took all the parts off of it, and I'm going to show you guys how to build one. So, uh, we're going to start off with the uh, parts list, and I think this is about everything you need, so here we go. Right here we have um, our motor. It's a, a 250 class brushless slow fly motor. Um, I have links for all the parts in the description, and of course, if you're wa if you're watching this on flight test, then in the article. Um, sorry, I'm gonna have to work around my cat. He's uh, kind of intruding. But um, all right, we got our brushless motor prop. Uh, prop saver on there. Um, got our 10 amp ESC. Got two push rods, uh, two control horns, two 5 gram micro servos, um, uh, my receiver, uh, one fourth ounce little sticky weight that we stick on the front of the plane to balance out the CG. Got a 500 milliamp hour. LiPo battery, 3 cell. I think you could also go 2 cell. Um, we have our skewers right here. These are going to be the struts for the wing. And this one is going to be on the tail. And over here we have our optional landing gear. It's just one big piece of .047 push rod, I, th I believe. And wheels. This is completely optional. You don't have to do this. And then over here I got... Um, one and a half sheets of foam board. That one's just um, this one's just because I did not have a full sheet of foam board, and that'll work for cutting out the wing. And this is for everything else. Um, you're, I don't think you're going to be able to do this in one sheet of foam board, so I suggest buying two sheets uh, at the Dollar Tree. Just Dollar Tree foam board. I have black because my Dollar Tree did not have white, so I'm stuck using black here, which. Uh, makes that look really ugly if you tear it at all. But, um, anyway, that's the that's everything you're going to need, and let's start the build. So here we have all of our electronics. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to set that all up. So, uh, for the uh, ESC and the brushless motor, in case you guys are beginners, um, just plug these in randomly, and then uh, when we power it all up, we're gonna, um, depending on uh, which way the propeller spins, um, and which way the air is flowing, uh, that's gonna determine if we need to switch them or not. And if it's doing it backwards, then you're just gonna have to unplug one of these and then plug it in and uh, switch. Just switch two of them. So there's that. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to plug, want to plug all of the JR connectors into your receiver. So to do that, um, and get the correct uh, polarity in there, um, here is our ESC. We're going to plug that into the throttle um, plug. Not sure if you can see it in there. I don't think my camera is going to focus. And if you're using a Spectrum receiver, um, the plug direction, I mean, it'll go anyway, but it, um, for me, I always um, have the little metal parts. Um, you plug it in facing this X right here. So we're going to plug that in, and there we go. Now we're going to do the same for the servos. Now for your aileron, sir, or for your rudder servo, you're actually going to plug that into the uh, aileron jack. Um, this will uh, set it up so on your transmitter, instead of using the uh, rudder channel, you're going to be using left and right for the rudder. And that's what you're going to want. You're not going to want to put it here. Because then you're, um, you're going to uh, go side to side, and it's not going to do anything when you're flying. And that's not very good for beginners. Uh, we're going to plug our elevator servo in. And there we go, all plugged in. Now we're going to test it out. So when you get these servos, um, they're going to come in a little packet like this. 
Uh, and you're going to have to screw in uh, one of these connectors. You're going to want to screw in the the smallest one and you're going to want to use a little black screw. Don't use any of these because then you'll, uh, you can uh, shred the gears inside of it. I've actually done it and I had to take my servo apart so I could repair it. Don't put the little uh, nylon control thing into the servo until you have um, plugged it. Um, made sure everything works and tested it out and centered all your trims on your remote because otherwise uh, you're going to turn it on and this is going to be like way over here or it's not going to be centered and that's not good. Now if you'll notice here um, I've got a motor mount for this motor. Um, what I did for this was I cut out a little piece of uh, you can use firewall which is probably the best option or uh, thin st uh, strip of plywood which is what I used. Um, I traced it out I think it is it's one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch and I traced it out on a big piece of uh, plywood and then I sawed it out using a uh, well pretty much any saw will work but um, it took me a while to do that you might want to do that if not um, I think you might be able to just glue the motor onto the onto a piece of paper maybe and then onto directly onto the foam or you could just directly onto the foam I don't suggest doing that though or if you know of any other mounts that'll work with this uh, screw configuration I screwed it in um, to the mount in case you're wondering how it's attached um, then you can also use one of those although it has to be fairly flat to fit in the plane one quick little note also for beginners um, if you don't know how to bind your receiver to your transmitter what you gotta do is you have to uh, plug in your throttle and everything um, so it'll so the receiver will have power and then the receiver should come with a little uh, binding key uh, bind plug, that's what it's called and what you're gonna do is you're going to insert it into the bind slash dat, I think that's what it says on that right there, you're not gonna be able to see it on the camera but you plug it in and um, you are going to power it on and then it will enter bind mode and then on your transmitter you enter bind mode and it will hook up with each other and then once you're done to power everything off and unplug the bind key alright once you have centered all the trims on your remote what you're going to do is you're going to turn your remote on and then you're going to plug everything in ESC is going to beep a few times, and once it's bound, now you have control. So for the servos, here's my uh, rudder, and here is uh, my elevator. My elevator is a little bit off, um, but that's not going to affect it that much. And, alright, now we're going to test out the throttle. Uh, don't try this at home, by the way. Make sure you have your prop off of the motor before you do this. And there we go, it's spinning the right direction. Alright, so here we go guys, we're going to start uh, tracing out the build. Um, and we're going to start with the body. So, for the body, it's... Um, doesn't have to be exactly specific, but there is some guidelines you should follow. I'll, I've tra already traced out my uh, first body piece right here, and I'll give you all the exact dimensions and everything, because you're probably going to want to make it exactly like this. Knowing me, when I watched my first build along video, I did not want to change anything, because I wanted it to fly exactly the same. But if you're creative, I mean, you could you could just add any uh, little mods you want to add. Um, this line, like right here, you could curve it to make it look better. Any of these lines, except for this one, that's going to be the, the wing curve. So you're going to want to keep that same. So now we're going gonna to show you all the dimensions, and then you can start cutting. All right, so the total body length is going to be 18 inches for the whole thing. And you're going to want to mark it right there. And the, uh, the curve going up right here... Um, you're going to want to measure 
uh, approximately one and a half inches up um, from the bottom to the top and right here it is five inches back from the leading edge and you're going to want to mark it and then you're going to draw a line between those so it makes a little triangle um, the front of the plane is also going to be one and a half inches right there just directly up from that little mark um, got this little tweak right here this doesn't have you don't have to put this there but um, if you want to know it's about an eighth of an inch up and I'm guessing about an eighth yeah about an eighth of an inch back so and then this little ca engine cowl thing right here is gonna be two inches back um, parallel to the bottom and the little slant right here you um, not gonna want to mess this up otherwise you're gonna um, affect where the wing is on the plane so the total length back that the wing should be from the front is three inches so this little line right here so um, what you're gonna want to do is measure up um, about one tick under, I think that's, yeah, that's one and seven eighths inch up, um, right here, you're going to want to little mark it, like this, hold on, it's kind of hard to do this, I'm holding the camera, like that, and then using this three inch line, you're going to, and, uh, the height, you're going to draw a one inch, uh, little slant right here, to find, um, and that'll make the, uh, little window. And now we're going to do the uh, wing curve. So this is the part that you want to get right. Um, it's a little tricky. Um, so from that line right there, you're going to want to draw a straight line across that is five and a quarter inches long. And then the height, the little height of this is going to be um, one tick less than half an inch. So that's three eighths of an inch. And so once you got um your three eighths inch height right here, it doesn't have to be right there that um but you're gonna want to draw in like this area. Um you're gonna measure um two and a quarter inches until you hit that um three eighths inch height and then down, you're gonna measure three inches until you hit the edge of that uh, five and a quarter inches mark. Um, and you're gonna want to mark that little slash mark. And then behind that, on the same line, um, do a two inch in extension. Um, this is the part that you can really make any shape you want. This whole back part right here. But for me, I'm just gonna do a two inch extension. And then about a quarter inch back from that mark, you're going to draw a line down here. What we're going to do is we're going to cut that, and then we're going to put a piece of tape over it, and that's what's going to make the wing um, fold back like that. So before you draw this line, we're going um, to measure one and a half inches back from the edge, from your edge of the entire length of the wing. And, or the body, and then you're going to measure one and a quarter inches straight up, and then you're going to mark that, and then on that one and a half inches mark, um, you're going to uh, put a line, excuse me, put a line up here, and then measure one and a half inches up, and mark that. What that's, what this whole little setup right here is going to do Oh, by the way, this is also one and a half inches. So, basically, like a little, uh, this is one fourth inch, one and a half inch, one and a half inch, and that, that part, in, that, this little area includes the one and a half inch. So, once you have that all set, you draw a line from here to here, and there you go. And what this little niche is going to do is it's going to, um, put a little spot for the elevator, and... It'll keep it nice and cozy in there. Alright. 
So now we're going to cut our body out. So just trace around that line. Don't cut out this line. Don't cut out this line. This and the rim are the only things that you're going to cut out. And before we start cutting, um, a few tips about uh, when you cut. Um, especially if you're like me and you're cutting on a carpet floor, um, you're going to want a flat surface and something to cut through. So I use this piece of uh, cardboard right here and I just cut out it and then if I make a mistake and I go through it, it's not going to rip up the carpet and it also gives me a hard platform for me to for me to cut it. So for the, for the fuselage here, you're going to cut out um, two identical pieces. You just cut out one and then trace it onto um, the same foam board and cut out a second piece because it's a two-piece fuselage. Alright, so once you have those two uh, body pieces cut out, we're going to move on to the uh, the plating. So, um, so the windshield and uh, and basically what, what, what holds the plane together. Alright, so for these pieces, uh, we're going to cut out a approximately one and a fourth inch um, width. Uh, that can be anywhere from like it, just basically however however wide you want your plane to be. Uh, mine is one and one fourth inch. I don't know why I chose that. That was just what was on my old model there where I was kind of freestyling. And anyway, um, the for your first piece is going to be a uh, two inches long. Second piece one inch long, and third piece doesn't really matter how long, but it should be around eight and a half inches. Um, I'm just working with how much foam I have on this side, so mine is going to be around eight and a quarter inches. So go ahead and cut that out. Oh, and by the way, I forgot one more thing. Um, we're going to make, um, for the motor mount, um, you might want this. Um, you could just glue uh, the motor mount direct directly to the front of this, or you could put a little piece of foam there and then uh, glue the motor mount onto it, which is what I'm going to do. So you're going to cut out... Um, for the mo for the motor mount, you're gonna cut out a one and a quarter inch by about one inch. Let's see, one and a quarter inch. You're gonna cut out a one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch uh, piece for the motor. Mount. So now, what once you cut that out, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, the paper off of the foam just because um, some of this uh, requires flexibility, especially the longer piece. You don't have to do this, but it uh, makes for a stronger body because if you just glue it onto the paper and you crash, and um, then the glue might come off, or this um, the foam might come off of the paper because the glue is uh, gluing right onto the paper and not directly to the foam. So let's go ahead and take the paper off. Take it off, we're just going to use our fingernail and just kind of pry it off little by little. You don't want to do this all at once, otherwise you're going to rip the paper. Let's do the other side. And there we go. Now before we uh, glue these pieces on, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out that um, the line that you made earlier down the length of the fuselage, we're just going to cut all the way through it. And I'll show you what that's going to do in a sec. So once you have your two, uh, your four cut pieces of fuselage, what we're going to do is we're going to use some, uh, some packing tape and we're going to tape along either um, outside part of it. And what that's going to do is it's going to add um, curvature to the body. So the tape's going to be right here, and then we can just curve this back so it meets at the rudder at the end point, like that. Alright, so once we have those two uh, pieces of tape nicely on there, um, we're going to be able to uh, bend it the opposite way. So, like this, and then that will provide curvature of the fuselage. We're going to do that to both pieces. Just a slight bend right at that curve. And now when we put this together, it will go together like this. Now we're going to start gluing. So we're going to start with the bottom piece. Uh, we're going to glue it right on here, like that. And then we're going to glue it onto this, so it'll look like this. So we're just going to put um, 
nice little bead of glue up until about where that uh, cut that you made earlier is. And we're gonna stick this right on there. Now we're going to glue on the uh, now we're going to glue on the uh, second part of the body. I can turn this around. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right here. right on the edge and then we'll put this on there all right once your bottoms dried we're gonna glue on our motor mount put two beads of glue down the front like that and then we're going to stick the front right on there like that now this part will need some reinforcement so um, I suggest you put um, beads of glue down here on the sides and also in this crack between the uh, bottom part and the front so let's do that And there we go, it should look like that. One important thing when you're gluing the body together, make sure the tape is on the outside. Um, you do not want it on the inside, otherwise it's going to end up like this. Um, but if you do accidentally do that, then see if you can slide a piece of tape down in there, and that will give it less uh, flexibility. All right, now we're gonna glue on the, uh, the engine cowl and the cockpit. What I did for this is I left uh, one of the white pieces, or I took off uh, one of the sides of paper and left the other one on to give it that black cockpit look. So we're gonna glue the white side. So for the cowl, just gonna put two beads of glue here. Make sure you're leaving that uh, space of the rounded cut because the uh, the wire for the ESC to the motor is going to come out right there. So that's glued in. I'm going to glue in the cockpit. And there we go. This is what the uh, unfinished uh, front body should look like. Right piece on the bottom. You got your motor mount. You got your towel, and you got your cockpit. There we go. Pretty nice. Now we're going to move on to the uh, to the tail. Now we're going to do the uh, horizontal stabilizer. So you're going to cut out a square um, like this. The dimensions are uh, 4 inches by 9 inches across. And uh, of course you're going to want to mark the middle, which is 4.5 inches. And you're going to want to mark this line, um, which is going to be how big your elevator is. And that's going to be 1.5 inches down from the top. 
So once you got that all cut out, um, um, basically what you can do is you could just uh, sketch out any tail that you want. I mean, it could be like a Cessna tail, like it, it could be all blocky, or you can cut out a cub tail, which is what I did with this. Um, it's up to you. Um, and make sure that um, when you're sketching it, it's going to end right there. And it's going to um, come down and end right there. So it's going to be like that, come around, and then come back there like that. Also, another important thing to note when you're drawing out the tail, um, make sure you give at least one inch clearance for the rudder. Um, so you're going to want to mark that out. Um, because if you don't, then the rudder is going to have no room to maneuver, and it's just going to be stuck in between these bounds. So one inch on either side. For those of you who aren't super creative, uh, here's what I came up with. Um, just like a simple little arc, like that. Or you can make it blocky if you want, it doesn't matter. Um, also important to note, I uh, should have known this earlier, leave some space for some foam board because the vertical stabilizer is going to go right there, so you want give it, to give it some room. Once you've got that all cut out, um, we're now going to uh, cut out the, uh, the parts that will make these go up and down. So we're going to start off um, with a light cut, um, not cutting all the way through, just cutting so it doesn't hit, um, go through the paper on the other side. Uh, we're going to cut it right through, um, right through there, just a gentle cut, and I will show you that right now. Notice how the cut doesn't go all the way through, and you can open up it. Uh, you can open it up like this, and then the paper still keeps it in there on the other side. You can do the same thing for the other one. And there we go. Now once you have that done, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fold it over, fold them over like this, and you're going to uh, we're going to use our uh, razor blade and uh, I know flight test does this too we're just gonna gently bevel it so you get a nice uh, slanted surface. It's very helpful to have a, a sharp knife at this point, um, so you can give it a nice uh, square bevel like that, so see it's kind of angled, and that's what's going to make this go up and down like that. And we're going to do that for both of those, and then I'll show you what comes next. So once you have both of those cut out like that, you um, should be able to go down and up freely like that, and um, you can see a better look of the cut right here. It's going to be right down, and you can also sand it um, if you don't uh, have a sharp razor, and that will work too. That's what I did for my build. And also, if you end up cutting through and you cut through the paper, you can always just put a piece of tape right there. So now that we have these right here to uh, strengthen uh, and long in the light, the life of, the, of these things, we're going to put a um, little piece of packing tape right um on that edge. You're going to fold it back and then put a piece of packing tape right on that edge. So we're going to put it here. I'm going to put it here. Make sure it's nice and flush so there's uh, no complications. And there we go, we're going to do that for both of them. Now if you have your uh, skewer um, handy, um, I believe this is a, uh, a three and a quarter inch uh, skewer. It can be shorter, um, but basically what this is going to do is it's going to make these both uh, function going up and down. Um, so we're going to glue that um, pretty close um, to the crease, probably right about there. So once you've got that done, 
um, that's uh, that's it for the horizontal stabilizer. All right, now we're going to move on to the uh, rudder. So um, the height of the rudder should be uh, five and a half inches, and the length of the rudder should be four and a half inches. So go ahead and like make a box right now, um, just around your uh, your rudder, and then um, your center line or your um, the line that's going to be um, the crease uh, for the just the rudder uh, for the rudder control. It's going to be two inches back from the front. And uh, this little segment right here, uh, you're going to measure one and a quarter inches up, and then draw a line across, and that's going to reference um, the point that's going to be flat and the point that's going to be curved. And also, at the lines, at, um, when this line and this line intersect, you're going to make a little uh, square cut right there, and that's going to allow space for the, um, for the elevator uh, skewer to go through. And... Uh, then basically just just cut out any shape rudder. I mean, as long as it's within your little square right there, um, it should be a good shape. And then you can cut it out. Um, uh, there's a few more things that you need to um, cut out before this is ready. So once you got the edge cutter um, cut out on that line um, that you made to reference this, before you're gonna cut out a little slit so that um, the horizontal stabilizer can slide right in there. And, um, then we're gonna cut out, um, just like we did on the horizontal stabilizer on this, and then we're gonna bevel the edges so that the control surfaces can move back and forth. There we go, we got, um... It's all cut out. Now we're gonna go ahead and bevel the edges. And there we go, that should do it. Now this should be able to uh, turn back and forth freely. And then we're going to put a piece of tape there, and a piece of tape there, and then we should be good to go. And there we go, this is what the finished uh, rudder should look like. Um, it'll move back and forth. Alright, uh, once we got that done, we're going to glue this onto this. All right. I'm going to uh, peel this back. All right. We're going to put a little bit of glue right here. And we're just going to put this on. As close to center as you can get it. I'm going to turn it upside down so you can make sure that you get it just right. gonna go ahead and let that dry before we move on to the next step. And there we go, we got our rudder and elevator little mechanism here. And now we're going to uh, glue it onto the main body. Alright, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lace up this part with glue right here on either side. And then we're going to uh, it in one by one, just slide it all the way forward. Shoot. Do it on both 
both sides. And you're going to want to hold it in there and make sure that the, uh, that the elevator is level. Alright guys, we're down to the final step, um, which is the wing. So, um, it's going to be the entire length of a piece of uh, this Dollar Tree foam board, which is 30 inches. Um, and the width of the wing should be five and a half inches. So make a mark five and a half inches away on either side from the bottom. Five and a half inches. And then do it on this side too. And then draw a line straight across. And then you're going to draw a line in the middle, which is, um, you're going to want to measure uh, um, 30 and then draw a line down the middle. And I mean, you you can shape your wing any way you want. Um, I'm probably going to curve the sides or draw um, just uh, little lines to make it look cooler. That's what I did on this one. Um, so pretty much anything you want. So now you should cut out your wing. So now once you have your wing cut out, um, what you're going to do is you're going to take the paper off and then we're going to flex it and I'll show you how to do that. Now once again you're going to measure uh, halfway uh, between and you're going to draw a line. Um, since I already drew my line I kind of had a crease already so I'm just going to trace that out. There's my center line, and then um, what we're gonna do is we're going to measure um, two inches back from the leading edge, um, both sides, and that's gonna be where your CG is, and also where the uh, flex of the wing is gonna be. So you're gonna draw a line all the way across, and then I'll show you what to do. Once you have your line drawn, what you're going to do is you're going to put a piece of tape, um, packing tape along the middle line and a piece of packing tape along this line. And then we're going to flex it. Uh, once you got the piece of tape across the center line and actually you're going to want to put it on the back of the wing down the center like that. Uh, we're going to go onto this table that I have up here, and what we're going to do is we're going to press down um, gently on that line so that we uh, we make the, curl, the crease. Sorry, it's a little messy up here. Um, we're in the process of moving the workbench. Um, Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to line the wing up on that line, and going to press down like so. Press and then that'll make a crease in the wing. So we're going to do that for the entire length of the wing. Now um, your wing should be uh, slightly creased on that two inch mark all the way down the wing. And the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to bend the center so that the wing um, folds like that. So we're just going to lightly uh, bend it. So um, the wing should now be, um, have a slight up curve along with the, uh, the airfoil curve. And you may have to uh, apply more airfoil curves after you bend it up because that kind of neutralizes it in the middle. So um, once you've done all that, uh, it's time to glue it on. So what you're going to do is you're going to glue the curve directly onto the curve that you made, um, when you made when you cut out the fuselage. So you're just going to glue it um, on both of these lines. You're just going to glue it directly to it, curve and all. You are probably also going to want to add some reinforcement along the sides once you have it on there so that it stays in there. So now congratulations, you have your uh, full airfoil all set up.
Pretty nice looking, huh? Now, um, all that's left is we're gonna cut out a little hatch for the battery right there. It's gonna be a lot better than the old one. The old one I just kind of cut a hole right in the middle there and it wasn't very good. Here we're gonna like cut a little hatch that's gonna slide open or um, flip open and then we're gonna put the ESC a little bit farther up so we can have a little bit more nose because this thing is a little tail heavy when it doesn't have any electronics on it. And then we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna put the electronics on it and then we are good to go. All right. All right, we're just gonna reach in there and just cut uh, approximately an inch down. That's about how big my battery is. And uh, maybe three inches down. Like that. And then cut this opening. And then we'll pop that out. And there we go. So basically just any size that your battery is going to fit in. Um, I'm going to need to make this a little bit bigger. But um, size it up any size you want. So it's a little square and then tape it over. I'm just going to leave mine open because I like to have that, uh, that opportunity. And there we go. Just fits pretty snugly in there. Um, now it will move around. A little bit so what um, what I would suggest doing is um, putting a little bit of velcro on the back back here and then a little piece on your battery um, I don't have velcro so what I usually do is I just tape it that also works but it's kind of hard to get the tape in there so velcro is definitely the best way to go with this but your battery is just gonna slide all the way up to the CG marker now another thing that I did um, is I put my little compartment right here um, so I could just uh, get a better idea of where I wanted my battery until I realized I had to put it all the way forward. But um, for the battery, I would suggest cutting one out here. But if you want, um, I don't know, a different a different angle, then you could slide it in here. But you might not want to do that because one of these uh, one of your skewers is gonna be glued right there and onto the wing for the wing strut support. And you might not want to do that because it took me a long time to get all the glue right there, just right. Alright, now we're going to move on to uh, mounting your motor and your ESC. So the ESC is basically just going to um, go right above the battery up here in this cavity. Oh, let's see if you can see it. Up here in this cavity. So you can glue or tape that. I'm going to glue it uh, just so it stays in there and it's more permanent. And you're gonna want to leave the uh, the lead the you're gonna want to leave the JR connector and the JST connector coming out the sides like this, so you can still connect it to the battery and connect it to the uh, receiver. So let's get started with that. All right. So once you've gotten that all in there, uh, you're gonna connect your ESC um, to your motor. Um, it doesn't matter which order these go in. Um, basically, you're just gonna find out when you uh, when you boot it up and fly it. And if it's reversed, if the propeller's spinning backwards, then all you have to do is interchange two of these, and then that'll fix your problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure that out right now, and then we'll glue on the motor. All right, once you've got that glued in, we're gonna um, they're all set up. You're gonna glue on the motor mount. Uh, just put. A bunch of glue on it and then just stick it right on there. Um, I realized after I did this there's not really gonna be any space to push this back in there. You could try to push it back in there if you want but I mean this it's still gonna be in the way of the battery. So what you can do is you can kind of wrap it up and uh, tape it down and if you want to get like a scale look I guess you could uh, um, make a little uh, uh, paper motor or something and put that on that'll give it like a cool sport plane look but um, in the meantime I'm probably just gonna tape mine down and let's glue this on probably gonna want a lot of glue on there because it's a motor 
right, just to find a nice and centered spot for that. And there we go. Nice and glued on there. Um, I don't know if I went over this before with the motor mount. I'm just using a little piece of plywood that I cut out. Um, and then I screwed it in um, from the motor. It's really easy to do. You just need like a... Uh, you just need pretty much any saw will do to cut that out. You can buy like a strip of uh, plywood from Home Depot or something. Alright. So what I did with my um, extra cords is I just uh, wrapped them around and taped them on the side. It doesn't look too bad. Alright guys, we're almost done. All we have left is to install these servos. So uh, what we're going to do for this... Sorry. Is... Alright guys, so all we have left to do is the servos. So, uh, to do this, um, we're going to start out with uh, elevator. Doesn't matter which side you do it on. Um, got our little uh, 5 gram micro servo here. Uh, make sure when you put the nylon uh, control horn on that your trims are centered on your remote and you uh, make sure that it... Um, you bind it to your remote first, otherwise this will um, completely mess up your rudder. So you might you might want to go do that first. Um, Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to install a uh, little control horn. Um, I have a little nylon ones that I just glue on. Um, if you have ones with like a uh, flight test, you can like stick them into the foam. Um, but for me, since it's like this, um, I'm going to... Let's see. Do it uh, right about there on the wing. No, no really specific dimensions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the paper and a little bit of tape off the foam there. So that uh, this will have a more firm solid glue to the uh, to the elevator so it will last a lot longer. So now let's go ahead and glue that on. Let's put a little bit of glue right there in the center. Put it on, just kind of spread it around. And there we go, we got our uh, elevator on. Now for the rudder, we're going to go to the opposite side. I'm going to do the same thing. Make sure it's behind the crease. And cut a little piece out of the paper. off and where is it there it is just gonna glue that right on there let's see so line it up with your servo all right cut a little bit farther down. And there we go, let's glue it on.
And there we go, that lines up. And we are good to go. So before you install your servos, uh, you're going to want to make... Um, get your push rod and make little Z bends or you can use um, easy connectors um, you can get them at like any uh, hobby store and they make it a lot easier but um, this is how you just make little Z bends using pliers um, and that's pretty much it I think this is what point zero three two push rod or something it's like a standard size um, so you should cut yours longer than this one because I realized after I built this um, so this should be about um, five and a fourth inches um, or that that one is but make it like six inches or five and yeah make it six or seven inches because um, I found out after I did mine um, I have a bit of a reach problem I and mean, I can have servo extensions and everything but I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to cut into the fuselage and have it feed through. Um, but anyway, just a little tip before you do it, and you're going to want these. Oh yeah, and um, you're going to want to make one with both the Z-Bends going the same way, and one where they're um, at a 90 degree angle of each other. That's because the servo is going one way, and the elevator is going another way. So before you glue on your uh, servos, um, attach the push rod. And also power up your um, your whole aircraft uh, with your receiver and battery attached and everything, so your servos are centered. So um, when you give it resistance, it won't like it'll resist you and it'll stay there. Um, so now we're just gonna glue it on. Make sure that the rudder is centered when we do this. All right, we're gonna put some glue. Right on the bottom there. And the rudder one is the one with the um, with the Z bends facing uh, the same direction. So we're just gonna hold that there so we can keep the rudder nice and straight. So look back here, gotta keep the rudder straight. Okay, so what I did with mine is I uh, cut this little slit through the fuselage and threaded it through, and then I um, made like a little hatch for my or a little uh, spot for my receiver. You don't have to do that, but it makes it like nice and convenient. It's like just flush and everything, and also it makes it way easier for everything to just get in there. All right, this is what yours should look like now. Should be able to work pretty well. My setup over here. And that's the dual rates. Um, you're probably not going to want to do it on dual rates because um, with the rudder size, it's extremely sensitive. So I would dial down the rates a little bit to maybe about, I don't know, 30%. I don't know. I have a DX5, so I can't do any of that fancy stuff, but uh, dial down the rates a lot. So the two last parts, um, we're getting there guys, uh, if your CG isn't exactly on this line, which it probably won't be, um, it's not for me, um, this is where this 1 4th ounce uh, little weight com comes in, or anything around there, uh, we're just going to glue it right to the front, right there, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now, and then after that we'll go on the struts and then we'll be done. Now before we start this, uh, you're going to need to cut out your skewers. These are regular uh, kitchen skewers. Um, and uh, for the struts, they're going to be uh, about nine and a half inches long. I don't know if you can see it there. So I'm um, just cut out some kitchen skewers or any wood thing. I think popsicle sticks might work, but you're going to need a long popsicle stick. Alright, final step. Um, unless you want wheels, uh, gluing on the struts. So this is probably one of the hardest parts, um, because you're going to have to hold the struts in place. So you're going to want to line it up, uh, right on the, or on the edge right here, and right on the curve down there. And go ahead and glue this part. Oh, see, I knocked it, and it's, this is the hardest part. You really got to make sure it stays in there. 
should probably use a lot of glue to keep it there. Now let that part dry and then we'll glue this part because it's a lot easier if this part's dry first. Alright, once that's dry, you're gonna um you're gonna push this up like that so that the wing is curving up and then you're just gonna glue that right onto the wing there. That's how you should have something under this um, so that the wings curve up. So go ahead and do that. Probably gonna need a lot of glue for this part too. So the final thing I'm going to do, um, you guys don't have to do this, this is completely optional, um, I'm going to add landing gear onto it, uh, it's this like one big piece and then you just kind of glue it on there, um, you got some little wheels here, um, I'll give you the dimensions of this, I think this is made with .047 push rod, so it's like a thicker kind, um, so alright, that's uh, one and a fourth inches, um, this part is three and a half inches. This part until the curve is four and a quarter inches. And the little curve is uh, about half an inch or more. And then to secure the wheels, I just use a little piece of hot glue on both sides. And what this does is it just kind of slides over like that and then you glue it or tape it or whatever. It's going to go over the battery compartment because I moved it forward, but um, uh, but you can still slide the battery in there. So you're still going to be okay. And that's it for the build, guys. Um, tell me what you think. If you're going to build one, please make like a flight video or something so I can see. I'd love to see how yours turn out. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, Please tell me uh, what you think. So that's about it, guys. See you in the next Ailer and RC video.